pizza tonight. I'm gonna start off with a margarita pizza because that was the request from JMK. Very simple. You've got your mozzarella cheese, heirloom tomatoes, and instead of basil, I will add a little bit of basil. I like to use basil pesto and sprinkle that onto the dough, which I'm going to make right now into the actual pizza itself. Of course, margarita pizza typically is just the basil itself, very simple. I like the extra flavor of the basil, so that's the first pizza I'm gonna do. I'm also gonna do a, a regular cheese pizza and then also a pepperoni. Are you excited about pizza? Starts with the dough, which has been fermenting for two whole days. Sometimes I'll ferment it for three days or even up to five days. And then what I do is in the morning, I usually take it out. Now this has only been out for about three hours. The first day I made the dough, I actually let it sit out for about six hours. So it already had some of that extra rising that you need on the very last day. So we're just gonna go with it. And then I have a bowl of flour. I, what I usually do is I'll use this two or three times. I just put plastic over this and keep it off to the side but I put it into this before I flatten it out. So let me show you the whole process. I like using a bench scraper and then this spatula that came with the pizza dough bins. And what I do is I just lift it out and I plop it right in. Once I plop it in here, I'll just show you what I do here. I'm just gonna flip it once, get it nice and coated. See this little bubble? Typically I don't want that big of a bubble right at the beginning. That's okay, I'll just work with it and then I'm just gonna coat it. I'm pretty liberal with it, but I do shake off any excess. And this is pretty stiff. Normally I like it a little more airy, but I ran out of the double low pizza flour, and so I use just the regular all-purpose flour. This is my favorite part of making pizza, more than actually putting on the toppings, because this is the part that takes a lot of practice, and now that I'm pretty comfortable with it, it's, it's, just, it's just fun. It's just fun to be able to do this. And when I use the pizza flour, the double O flour, I'm able to really get this nice and thin and flip it into the air just like you see inside the movies or documentaries or obviously at a regular pizza shop. This is very stiff. It's not as elastic, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to flatten it out as much as possible. So let's see how this works. One of the cool things about making pizza dough as many times as we have, you kind of learn to work with any type of dough, no matter what state it's in. So, just like, in, just like anything else, it just takes a lot of practice and learning the dough. So at this point, what I'm doing, I'm going to spread it apart. Turn it, spread it apart. Turn it, spread it apart. Turn it, spread it apart. There we go. And then you can do this. In fact, guess what? I'm gonna show you guys what's up. Yeah! There we go. I'm not quite proficient yet, but I'm getting there. Personally, I think this is unnecessary. Oh, dang, you never wanna do that! That's the first time I've done that. Maybe I was just getting too confident with the camera on. So what I would do there, just put a little flour. Okay, so anyways. So one thing I like to do to get it real thin is I'll just spread the crust out like that. The goal here is to get it nice and flat and thin without putting a hole like I did there so that I can get it onto the pan. At this point, I am spreading it a little bit. I'm stretching it out. Now with basically my whole arm, that hole is just really not going away. So what I'm gonna do there with that little hole, I'm gonna take a little chunk from the edge this is not ideal, but better than leaving it. I'm just gonna patch it up, just like that. So while I'm doing this, pressing all the way to the edge. As I mentioned, this is not my best pizza dough. It's all good though. It's still gonna be good. So with the pesto, one thing I would suggest, if you're putting this inside of the fridge, let it get up to room temperature, because if you don't, it's gonna be very hard to work with this. When it's cold, it's thick and it's solid, but when it's room temperature, it's softer. You can just spread it like this. Don't have to be perfect. You just want to get it spread out. And frankly, I don't even, I don't even spread it out like the way you do a red sauce because pesto is so strong depending on how you make it. You just want to make sure it kind of gets on most of the bites. By the way, 
to any Italians looking at this saying this is not a margarita pizza. I apologize. This is just my version. And the girls like a proper margarita pizza as well. Today though, this is the one I want to do. I mix it up. I, ch I change it. I do different styles. Today it's the pesto version. Oh yeah, another thing is freshly grate your cheese. All right, for tomatoes, I do not use the edges typically. There you go, and just put it on. I do cut these pretty thin. And we'll spread them out. And as you can see, I just put it exposed right, right to the heat. Oh, just enough. These two, I will put some salt and eat it. So I just generally put salt all over. I put a little extra on the tomato itself so that when you bite into it, you get all that flavor coming through. I personally like to also do black pepper too. Not too much. Okay, there you go. Margarita pizza. I'm gonna put this into the oven, which has been heating up to 500 degrees for the last 20 minutes. I'm gonna put it in there for about 13 minutes exactly. Very important. Let me put the timer on. Now in the past, I would turn it, but I find that when you do that, you let all the heat out. Lately, I just go with it. So some parts of the crust will be a little more cooked than the other parts. I'm totally okay with that. I just want one good, you know, straight bake, no heat loss. That's just what you do at home. Now, if I was baking this on my pizza oven outside, the uni, I totally would turn it because it'd be too hot in one spot. So that's just my method. You can see how it turns out. A little trick is I always have a cutting board, but I don't just put the pizza on here when it's done. I like to put it onto a rack. That way it doesn't get soggy underneath. And there's some pizza places that do this, but um, I'll put it on here, let it rest, take it off of here, slice it and then put it back on the rack. That way the bottom can stay nice and crispy. Just one of my little tricks that hopefully help other people, okay? No, you don't have to do this, but especially because I make so many and the girls sometimes come down whenever they come down to eat, I just want the pizza to be at its best. I want the pizza to be as crispy as possible on the bottom. And depending on the type of toppings or sauce I use, the bottom can get soggy. All right, first pizza. Let's see how it turned out. I'm taking that right away. Ho, 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 ho. Last time I totally burnt this. I accidentally put the broil function on because I was in the middle of doing something else. So, oh baby. All right, so the one thing about doing a margarita pizza with fresh tomatoes, you have to be careful that the moisture from the tomato, tomato doesn't leak through. So I'm gonna go ahead and feel the bottom. Oh yeah, it's good. Right now it's good, but I'm gonna go ahead and move it onto the cutting board. I use two spatulas. My gosh, I look at the bottom now. Oh my gosh, that's perfect. You can see how crispy it looks. I have this commercial grade pizza slicer called Dexter. So if you wanna know, I'll, I'll try to remember to put a link here or just type in Dexter commercial pizza slicer. There you go. So I can already see, see there's oil on the bottom. That means that some of the pesto olive oil is coming through. Again, this is why you want the rack. You guys grab a piece and be the taste testers. It's a little hot, so be careful. I would uh, blow on it. Is it good? You like it? I didn't burn it this time. Yeah, you like it? Did she say it's good, Daddy? And it's been a while since I had margarita. Mmm. I don't know if you can hear that crunch. Bottom of crispy. Mm. That salt on the tomato. So important. I like it when the cheese gets bubbly and charred a little bit on the bottom. All right, for the cheese pizza, I do some special things. Of course, red sauce. So first start off like that. My sauce is simple. Just a whole can of whole tomatoes, garlic, 
olive oil and a little bit of crushed red pepper. Of course, I do put salt and a little bit of MSG. I get some Parmesan and I grate it right directly onto the sauce like this. How much you put on is all based off of how much you want to put on. Mm -mm -mm. This Parmesan is from Costco. Smells great, freshly grated. Oh baby, I'm not opening the door to the oven. It cooks better, the crust cooks better. So I pre-cook the sauce, which is not the way I learned, but I like it, it works out. So for my oven method, this is kind of the way I do it now. There we go. Same thing, not too much cheese. I just keep my oven running the whole time. 500 degrees. Same thing, 13 minutes. Put it in there. Bam. So one thing I did differently on that pizza is I didn't put salt on. Because of the Parmesan cheese and there is salt in there, sometimes I don't put it on there. Now, if there's somebody that likes saltiness or likes more salty flavors, I will put the salt on there, but I like to let whoever's eating put on their own salt or if they like to dip it into a, like a ranch sauce. So just FYI, that's the one thing I did do differently there. There we go. Oh, baby. Oh my gosh, look at that. Chuck E. Cheese ain't got nothing on me. Woo -hoo -hoo. There we go. See how it's a little more cooked on this side than this side? It's all good though. It's all the way cooked through and it's crispy on the bottom. Oh my God. I should learn how to freeze these. Good? It's good? Leah, is it good? Yeah? You give it a thumbs up too? Nice. For the pepperoni, I like using this cup and crisp. And you're gonna see when I cook it, what that means. I mean, you can see it from the package, but. Same process, put the sauce on first. I'm sure you notice, see those big chunks of garlic? That's gonna be really good in the pizza. What? It's not, what, the, the ranch? Ranch is not spicy at all. I will also add Parmesan to this pizza as well. I'm gonna put a little extra on there because this is really for myself. Oh, you can really smell that Parmesan. When you're grating it and that aroma just hits you, you know it's a good Parmesan. You get that from the aging process. And of course, mozzarella cheese. Same thing, not too much, especially since I put a whole bunch of uh, Parmesan on there. So with the pepperoni, I do really cover the whole thing. Since we don't make that much pepperoni, since the girls do prefer the margarita and the cheese, I cover every single spot. Think about most pepperoni, especially this cup and crisp, the pepperoni is going to shrink a little bit, go in a circle like that. I'm gonna to try to cover it as much as possible, knowing that it's gonna shrink, but also it helps to protect the cheese because the cheese, well, I mean, you saw the cheese pizza, it was fine. It doesn't burn, but yeah. Let me know if you're from Italy. I'm curious about if pepperoni is a famous flavor or you guys have a different cut. There's sometimes where I go to uh, a pizza restaurant, like more authentic one, Neapolitan style, and I don't see pepperoni on there. I'll see another type of cut salami or like even a prosciutto but not pepperoni is pepperoni an american thing or do you have pepperoni also in italy 500 degrees 13 minutes oh baby Woo. 
cup and crisp. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gotta get it off of there right away though. The thing about pepperoni is there's a lot of oil on there and sometimes it will leak through, especially with a thin crust. They're right on there. You can actually see it right here. See that? A little bit of oil. Get it right off, right onto the rack and let it rest. <laughs> Put you away. Still the best pepperoni. Hot oil. Be careful, it's dripping on my hand. It's burning. I've got a little bit of a dilemma right now. Honey, I need your help. I made the Italian sausage, right? But I have to choose pesto sauce or red sauce. Which one would you want to try with the Italian sausage? I think the red sauce matches well. Okay, red sauce it is then. Ouch, steamed, baby. Look at that. Oh my lordies. Mm -mm -mm. Oh baby, uh oh. Stuck a little bit on the bottom there. And then the last, what did you call this? This is sausage, onion, basil. Final pizza right there.